Tony Dottino. It is now Monday, January 3rd. Happy New Year to all my Live with Tony uh, members and uh, fan folks that are listening to uh, my Live with Tony's that I do Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Uh, sometimes in the 5 o'clock hour, sometimes earlier. Uh, we're having a, a, a dinner at 5 tonight, so I said, whoop, I got to do this uh before uh, we have dinner because we did not have our turkey dinner over the weekend and we're having it this night so uh we decided to just go play for the weekend and in a safe environment but i get the sunday new york post i have a thing live in uh, windermere florida and I have a thing about getting the sunday new york post uh, first it's uh, got a fantastic sports section so don't know why I would want to read about the Giants and or the Jets, but it covers the Giants, the Jets, the Knicks, the Nets, and uh, the Rangers and the Islanders. So it's got a phenomenal sports section. It's probably as good a sports section as there are in any newspaper across the country. And uh, then I just uh, kind of catch the worldwide news and uh, I read it on Sundays and uh, usually find things in it that are helpful and I enjoy reading. So. I get the Sunday New York Post, and we were out at the community pool this weekend. Now we're out at the community pool because it happened to be 85 degrees here on uh, Sunday, and the water temperature in the pool with a week's worth of 85 degree temperatures kind of warmed up enough. Better go jump in the pool and do some of my swimming, which I like to do. And at this time of the year, I usually have a wetsuit on, but uh, still able to get into the pool without it. But I'm sitting there after I was done and got out of my wet bathing suit, I turned around and started reading the New York Post. So I have to finish reading the, uh, the sports sections. I come back and here I start reading uh, some of the articles and I get this article in here, turn back time, turn back time. So we're gonna turn back time and I start reading about, okay, the book, The Younger You, so it's really turning about a book called The Younger You, offers a simplistic form of biohacking, which is embraced by Gwen Paltrow, Terrell Owens, Giselle Bungeon, Tom Brady, Jack Dorsey, Jeff Bezos, all these people have pictured here in this thing, right? And there's you know, Tom Brady there, looking, at, I guess, at his wife, Giselle, but in any case, they're turning back time. So I'm obviously interested in turning back time. Okay, what are they doing in terms of turning back time? Well, you've probably heard me talk about these things over the past year because I keep coming back to the six elements of brain health and heart health. So how do we turn back time? Well, what are you eating? So we keep talking about nutrition. Now, they got a little bit more fancy here, but they talk about readjusting eating ratios. So what's your ratio of your calories in terms of carbs, uh, vegetables, fruits, protein, where you're getting your proteins from? Uh, we've talked about healthy fats and what that means to us in terms of our heart as well as brain health and how that helps facilitate the fats in our brain, helps facilitate the uh, neurotransmission. Uh, so nutrition, we've talked about that and talked about that. Next is a good, get moving, right? Simple, get moving. A workout promotes cellular repair. We've been talking about exercise over and over again. It not only burns fat, but it helps build heart muscle. So doing some form of exercise does not mean you gotta be a marathon racer, but some form of exercise. Now they recommend at least 30 minutes at a moderate exertion level. And if you could do that five days a week, that's wonderful. I do 30 minutes three times a week, and I'm fine with that in terms of where I'm at. But it helps clean the house with anti-aging DNA uh, changes. So we are finding more and more people talking about exercising, all of the health benefits, as well as your heart, your brain, and what healthy uh, exercising is doing. And even to the point that I've shared the notion of walking and that you don't have to walk miles and miles, but get out and walk, you know, 15 minutes a day and just uh, uh, get about and just de-stress yourself. Get out and get a little bit of, of physical movement and that doesn't leave you sitting on the couch for that much longer. 
Another one, God, this sounds like a perfect advertisement for it, but manage your stress. And we, we've all, in the past two years, have dealt with a significant amount of stress. So how are we managing stress? It increases the inflammation in your body. So as you're stressing, you're firing cortisol, which can be positive, and that it helps firm your muscles up in a fight or flight uh, way, but it also creates inflammation in the body if there's too much of it. So an excess of it creates the, the wrong shift. Stress increases the, the, the inflammation, raises blood sugar and reduces immunity. So what more do you need to say, God, you know what, we're giving up 15, 20 minutes of television, uh, even by the way, if you're watching a football game or a basketball game, give up 15 minutes of the first half of it, go out and take a walk, come back and either record it and watch the recording and catch up, or just don't worry about it because you traded off 15 minutes of what was good for your heart, what was good for your brain, for 15 minutes of watching uh, somebody play their game and keeping their exercises going. So how do we manage our stress? And realizing that it is uh, something that uh, creates inflammation if we don't manage it well, and it also uh, uh, raises blood sugar and reduces your immunity. So what more do you need to know other than to get out and exercise? Next, all right, you've heard these all in the six elements of key brain health. Jeff, they're writing about it here. In a new book, it's called Staying Young, Younger You. How do you, how do these people stay younger? Sleep, sleep it off. Getting enough is fundamental for healthy DNA. Aim for at least seven hours a night. Now, I've read anywhere from five to eight, nine is too much. So even too much sleep is not a good thing for you. So what you're trying to do here is get yourself seven hours and uh, there's a whole session we've been doing on getting sleep because I think there's enough of people when they're not getting enough of sleep realize it because they're tired and who wants to just go through the day dragging your your tail around like oh god I wish I could just lay down and take a nap or sleep but I'm at the office and I got something important to do or I've got a critical project that I've got to get done so now I'll add stress to the fact that I didn't get a good night's sleep. So now we talk about sleep, and I've talked and talked and talked about the importance of it, but more importantly, things that you might be able to do in addressing how you might not get a good night's sleep. And so when do you shut the TV off? When do you not listen to the evening news? By what time do you stop it and turn it off? Uh, what pleasantries can you talk about at night? Hold on. You know that turkey dinner I was talking to you about? It might be time to take it out of the oven. So in any case, uh, what are we doing in terms of getting a good night's sleep? Now we're back to nutrition, avoiding toxins. Eat organic when possible. When it's not, peel or soak vegetables in vinegar to reduce toxin exposure. Avoid using plastic food and drink containers. Now, boy, this really starts to get crazy because we're trying to avoid toxins. We don't want to be eating and ingesting them in our nutritional habits. But what are we doing in terms of the different uh, foods that we're putting into our body, the, the oxygen levels that we're breathing in, and how they get into the holistic system of the human, human being and have an impact on our neural firings, on our heart and our air and our breathings, and how this all connects. And then the last one, uh, we talk about this all the time, and this is the, one of the hardships of COVID uh, quarantining and stuff is hug it out, meaning we need social interaction. So we want to have social, know the love hormones. This is great to, to hear, man. So go find somebody to hug. Love hormones release oxytocin, oxytocin, oxytocin. And it uh, comes from physical touch with people. Hug your kids even cats and dogs. I mean, I'm not joking about this. Just have somebody that you can feel it releases a level of, of a love hormone and it helps you cope with stress and recover from any trauma. It's even been found to lower blood pressure and can help you stop eating when you're full. So now we know we've had an epidemic of it, so I'm not telling anybody here to get out there and just go overdo it and get wacky. 
but there's got to be somewhere, somebody, uh, something in your life that you can uh, you can hug and feel joy with and feel that love and that connection. Uh, I had uh, a, a ten day period of time where I was alone during the Christmas holiday, but I found the the neighbor next door got themselves a new uh, poodle dog. And I tell you, this dog I'm walking by the front of my driveway and sees me and comes running up the driveway. And I just love this dog and pet this dog. Now, I've not ever been a big dog lover. I've never been a big swimmer. So, uh, you know what? There's possible change for us at any age. And so uh, this dog comes along with uh, one of the kids in the family and she's walking the dog. And this dog sees me and just whoosh, run, takes right off to come give me uh, licks and hugs. And I pet the dog and just, it's wow, five minutes of dog petting. It's just like, you know what? I just feel so much better that this dog personally comes over and gives me all kinds of love and care. And boy, dog's best friend, a man's best friend, dog's best friend is a man and a man's best friend hopefully is a dog. In any case, uh, those are the elements that they talk about in living younger, younger, younger you happens to be all part of the six elements of brain health. It's going to be our new online course that will be coming out uh, within the next week or so. It's all narrated, slides are being finished, and I think it's going to be a winner because it really has got the elements of what everybody keeps talking about as the things that you should be doing to maintain good long-term brain health as well as heart health and your physical being. So with that, we're off and going for the new year. Have a good evening, and we'll be back out here on Wednesday to talk about the uh, next elements of what we can do to live happy, healthy, strong lives and keep our cognitive functioning at peak performance.